Hey, everybody, and welcome to Signals from the Frontline. I'm your ghostly host, Seth, <laughs> and I'm joined tonight by... Kicker. <laughs> I'm uh, more of a ghost, Shelby. I'm and the ghost here. Shelby waiting to see who can be more ghostly today. Why are you guys so ghostly? What is going on? We have green screen okay, issues of kind. Kicker, don't worry about it. We can't <laughs> all be as picturesque and perfectly lit as you, Kicker. Uh, I, I have true. a lot of lights. A lot of lights in my room. Uh, <laughs> what have you been up to, Kicker? What have I been up to? I have gotten my first practice game in with the new ad mech. And yes, don't hate me, Seth, but they are fun. They are awesome. But I kind of hate all the little bits that I keep on snapping off. I've definitely, you know, you spilled blood over these models. They're sharp. And th now I'm just fragile because I've broken off all the antennas off every single one of them. So, Oh, no, you poor thing. And yeah. you're, you're <laughs> really good army and it's fragile bits mm, I'm fine fine shelby what, what, what have you been up to i went to a team tournament this past weekend and personally had an zero and five record but our team had a four <laughs> and one record hell yes so, like that's the definition of winning i lost to two ad mech lists i am not salty whatsoever <laughs> um but yeah, I, I, don't, I think I'm going to be chilling on 40k, like actually playing competitive 40k for the next month while we enter wedding planning phase. Um, but I will probably pick up an AOS army while we're while we're moving in. Uh, Seth, you know, what about you? Start a new army just casually. Yeah, it's casually. fine. Don't worry about it. Cash. Don't worry about it. Casually. <laughs> you will find some models in your mailbox imminently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seth, uh, you yeah, are listeners, cool. listeners of last week may 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 have heard that I had to speed paint ten lich guard. <laughs> before we went to that team event. They look beautiful. They, they arrived in my mailbox at like 10 a.m. I was like, paint, paint! <laughs> so, Seth, you were on the team with Shelby, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we had a good time. Um, we used the cunning strategy of called throw Shelby at the worst possible list in the opponent's army <laughs> and hope Connor and I can table the, the other two players, which we did four out of five rounds. 80% um, of the time, it works every time. It, it was, it was <laughs> an effective strategy. So um, I took the stomp and had a blast. So, uh, But we're, we're here and we're ready to get going. So, uh, Kicker, why don't you take us into industry news? Well, well, wait, I have to ask, how did the stomp do for you? Is that something you're going to bring oh, again? Yes. Like, that's pretty awesome that you brought well, us up. So, Kicker. It's because of you that I'm considering um, going to Lone Star Open, um, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, yeah, if 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 uh, I have some time off and like towards the end of July, the weekend of Lone Star, but I'm also maybe doing a smaller event that weekend. We'll see. But if the new Orc Codex isn't out by then, I will probably run the the Stompa because in five games it killed. I calculated six thousand eight hundred ninety points. Ouch. Ouch. So it was it was uh, it was doing some doing the the Gork and Morks work. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, very impressive, Seth. Let's go uh, talk about a little bit what's happening in the industry of our favorite hobby, 40K. Guys, there is nothing too exciting in, in terms of product releases from GW, but there was a little tease about the new, uh, it's the Charizard supplement, I think that's what it is, the Book of... Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Charizard, Book of Charizard, Fire, yeah, Book Fire of Breeding. Fire, number two of these supplement series. Uh, nothing too exciting, just a little tease here and there. They like to toy with us. Um, but you know what they did release were some more previews on Bellacore and just... Who's, wow. who's that? Yeah, right? The big meanie. That, that's I've heard he's like a really tiny imp. <laughs> no big deal. Totally. So, yeah, yeah. He's probably going to shake up the uh, the world when he drops finally uh, with his rules in 40K. So we'll, we'll see what happens. That's that's in the new supplement, right, guys? That's His rules will be in the supplement, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be in the Warzone book. I Warzone, okay. Charmander. Yeah. Yeah. Warzone, Charmander, Charizard. Ember shot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he it's looks Charmeleon. disgusting, for the record. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. And that model's super hard to get a hold of. So if you have one, congratulations. About to, you know, you're about to see him on the table every single time you decide to play uh, 40K. I'm oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Guys, uh, so we have some exciting news. Everyone will start be, we'll, we'll ask everyone kindly to start using the ITC Battles app during our events. And I know change is scary, so some people are like, wait, no, I don't want to have to use an app while playing. And you don't have to do anything. But it's exciting because if we're doing this, then the full, you know, the full FLGN team can take advantage of it and stream all the stats, all the data live during the tournament. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's going to be really cool. We'll be having the uh, the FLGN team, that's including Val and our wonderful producer, Richard, uh, at Lone Star. But basically at all our events, they'll be there. And by, you know, some, using this app, we'll get, a, you know, a live, uh, a, you know, a live play by play of who's winning at that exact second during the uh, tournament. Uh, and it'll be cool. We'll have all the data and be able to track everything all, along the way. So, so that you know, that will allow you to get even better content, which you guys, you know, you all love. Um, 
So on that same note, uh, talking about some changes, uh, or not really changes, but I guess just updates, the Las Vegas team tournament will be a win-loss format, not battle. A lot of people have been asking about that. I think, Seth, you even asked about that, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I was curious. Um, most team events are doing uh, doing a differential scoring, which yeah. makes list building a lot different. Um, but um, after talking to you, I think the consensus was the win-loss format um, is a little bit more approachable for, for kind of first-time teams and exactly. first-time players. Um, so I think that's the direction um, you guys are going for now. But um, there's definitely some, like a WTC does differential, ATC does differential. So, um, you know, I, I, I think I would prefer differential, but I'm going either way. So. So, yeah, so whatever. this is just our first frontline gaming team event. So things can change. We're we're just going to test it out, see how it happens. You know, see see what people think. Um, it does make it very approachable, so that anyone can understand. You know, if three of your players win that round, then you win that whole. You know, then that your team wins and moves on. Um, yeah. We're just trying to make it as easy and approachable as possible. But with that said, you know, if you know the feedback is not positive after that, we'll we'll, we'll pivot. Um, so, kicker, do you mind if I ask a question real quick? Totally, totally, yeah. Throw it. Um, so. It's win loss for for the actual like the actual game itself, but the the, the battle points afterwards those are still going to be pretty relevant. Are those going to be relevant for pairing, or are you still doing win loss pairings? So so, so yeah, uh, the win loss. That's a good question. Oh, you caught me off guard there. So the battle no, points. Right. Are, if, if you need to table that, that's totally yeah. Let's let's put that on the side because I don't want to misspeak. I do know yeah. battle points will be important for any sort of ties. They'll be the official tiebreaker. Yeah. Um, so you know, but. You know what? I don't want to say anything because I don't want to be mis misquoted. Shelby has found a a, a new <laughs> sudden passion for team events after this weekend. I think. No. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but the, way, the, the possibility of like losing all of my games but still feeling really good as a team—that's like pretty great to me. <laughs> well, yeah, you still won, right? At the end of the day, you won. But I guess the idea is that if you have five players, all of them—you know—you you don't want to just have one person always lose every time. You kind of want to have every player hopefully win a few few games. No. Nah. Um, no, overrated. No. Overrated. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Um, guys, uh, one of the things that have been asked about was the hobby track regarding the ACO. There was some uh, hiccups there. Um, so, you know, I promise that the hobby track is being kept accounted for. Um, but I guess there was a few issues that people didn't realize that you need to submit your army to be judged for any hobby track at basically any frontline gaming event at a very specific uh, set of times. Usually it's the first... Uh, first and second day early in the morning before the uh, the tournament begins. Some people weren't there, so they were never judged. Um, but then there was also some issues with the scores and how they were uh, inputted into uh, BCP by our staff, which, you know, we're, we, you know, that's just training there. And then, but the, the real issue, which I think is why most of the people that didn't get their scores from ACO or uh, as they expected the scores to be, was because that there was some corrupted data, I guess, when it was being uploaded into BCP by BCP staff. And so a lot of these scores are just kind of lost or totally mixed up with that said the three uh the bc guy, uh, B yeah, guys have been working diligently for three days to get everything resolved and you should see like maybe three hours ago everything looking fine so everything should be good now you have your wonderful scores that you earned are right you now. telling me that my show notes for the itc hobby track are now out of date <laughs> um maybe you can see my maybe 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 uh, good news though i think the the top players, uh, the top hobby track people were at ACO and they scored very, very well at ACO. So I don't think there was any switch up there. Um, sorry, Seth. <laughs> uh, guys, a SoCal is coming up uh, and we're looking for vendors, judges, and volunteers. Please email me. You'll see me on the Frontline Gaming Community group page. Just shoot me an email and message me because we could use a few volunteers there to help uh, run the event. And of course, uh, if you want to be a vendor, this is going to be a massive event. We're going all out. We have a huge hall there that we're going to fill up as uh, as with as many games, uh, players, game systems, players as possible. I'm going to uh, go yeah. out on a limb here really quickly and yeah, ask sure. if SoCal is in Southern California. Whoa! Yeah. Is that, yeah, is that correct? Sure. Sick. Oh, my my I was going to say we might be able to suggest a judge who's somewhere over there. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. He's waiting in the wings. I don't black and white for a second. <laughs> I don't know, man. You're winning the ghost contest currently. You are significantly more ghosty than me. For, for anyone that's listening to this podcast on the drive to work, uh, we do have a visual uh, podcast. It's live on Twitch and YouTube every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you get to watch our beautiful faces or our ghostly figures of Seth and Shelby, um, who apparently have you know green screen issues or something. Yeah. That's very generous and we're, being, of you. we're being requested to run a meet and greet booth at SoCal. <laughs> 
Um, but yes, yeah, so SoCal will be in San Diego, well, just outside of San Diego in October. Uh, tickets will be going on sale next month. So mm -hmm. and uh, moving right along, guys, I wanted to show off, uh, these just came into my office, some brand new swag for the Lone Star Open. We, uh, I don't know if our wonderful producer can pull up photos of these. There we go. Let's check this out. Yes, this is the challenge coin that we have. Ooh, shiny, beautiful challenge coin. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be coming in. The how, challenge how coin can is I get one of those solid. stickers? Oh, that would be dice. Those are dice. First. So we have the dice. The dice are beautiful. Everyone will be getting a pair of die. And then we also have this kick-ass challenge coin. These are the Frontline Gaming challenge coins. These are die cast metal, solid brass, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. On one side, it's got the uh, the Lone Star kind of, you know, you know, Lone Ranger kind of character. And on the back side, it has the Frontline Gaming logo. These offer you all sorts of wonderful perks to be used at future Frontline Gaming events. And we will be discussing that down the line. But if you're coming to Lone Star Open and you are at Atlantic City Open, make sure to bring your challenge coin because it will be well worth it. Uh, just surprises. Just you'll, you'll be surprised. Okay. All right, guys. You're um, tempting me. Yeah, you, you have your challenge coin, right? Uh, yeah, and I have that weekend off. Yes. So I'll see you in Texas then, right? Quit tempting me. Okay. Come to I was Texas. about to say, man, you, that we talked about this like 10 minutes ago, and you are already on the board of going yes. to Dallas when you previously were not. So, like, I think, um, it's a, I think it's a done deal. And Shelby, hopefully you can make it. Maybe, maybe not. No, oh, you're getting married, right? I guess priorities, right? I mean, I could abduct yeah. her, but she might kill us. I would be really not into that at all. <laughs> that would be bad. Super yeah. bad. And um, all those signals right there. Yep, 100%. <laughs> uh, all of this is... Anyways, uh, we got a shout out in the chat from Robert Demings, and I want to specifically mention Robert because he's the one who ran the team tournament this past weekend and did a phenomenal job. Uh, there were 80 people, 20 something teams. It was freaking amazing. So hi, Robert. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Also, Thank everybody you, that's watching. Thanks for watching and stuff. Thanks, guys. Uh, we'll be taking questions throughout the show, too, especially when we have our guests coming on soon. But for now, that's we have true. Shelby talking about the FLGN news. What's happening this week? Oh, yeah, man. I don't have a whole lot for you. Um, just an update on a few of the show pieces that came out these these past few days. Um, so I mentioned this last week, but if you haven't already seen that 40K Game Changers is back with Steve Joel, uh, his first special guest is Duncan Rhodes, the, the face of Citadel Paints and GW for a very long time until he stepped away. Um, and so that interview is actually really interesting. It's about kind of like how uh, Duncan separated from that role, what he's been up to, what his life has been like, and like how he uh, became such an awesome painter and that sort of thing. So it's, it's it's a pretty chill, really cool episode. And again, I will say this every time, Steve Joel has the voice of an angel. Uh, <laughs> it's just a nice listen. Um, so last night, Grim After Dark with uh, their special guest, Phil the Glacial Geek, um, had a pretty cool episode. You should you should watch if you can because John wears a delightful Hawaiian shirt Ooh. that really belies the fact that he was interviewing the Glacial Geek. Uh, <laughs> I see he, he there. wore wow. the shirt because people <laughs> made fun of him for wearing a hoodie previously, so he jazzed it up with a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> I just thought it was ironic that he was wearing a Hawaiian shirt with a. Anyways, no, that's him dressing so. up. Um, so I tried to, sorry, I actually tried to like find a little bit more about Phil so I could like tell people what Phil the Glacial Geek did, but uh, he hasn't posted on his Twitter in like three years. So, you know, you really got to diversify your He's social media. Facebook. I know, but he could go to Twitter. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a grognard. I use Facebook. You're a what? <laughs> grognard. I don't even know what that means. I I'm a either. boomer. I'm old. Oh, wait. Okay. All right. Boomer. So anyways, there's also a new episode of Chapter Tactics. Um, Yay. That, that's a thing. And I don't... Last week, Val gave me an update about Stat Center and was like, hey, it's on pause for a week. And um, I guess it's still on pause. They, well, he, they were... When I last talked to them, they were waiting for some videos to come in from some of the players they were interviewing. Um, and they wanted to wait to get those. That's fair. That was fair. what I was last told. But, you know, they'll, they'll get to it when they get to it. You know, yeah. yep. El Jefe's got a lot going on behind the scenes. Foul's sold is like it's health Falcon's today. It's so. migratory season. He's got to go to the <laughs> south. <laughs> right. He's migrating oh. south for the summer. Yep. What, 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 what do you have tomorrow, though? We do have something awesome tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, of course. We have the Thursday show. We have yeah. your typical Thursday show. Thursday show is all about covering upcoming, upcoming tournaments, getting you really excited about whatever may be coming for the weekend. I don't know. I tried to talk to Paul, and I was like, yo, dog. What you guys going to be talking about? And he was like, I don't know. So, you know, fly by the seat of your pants coverage, folks. But it's they're awesome. such experts. They can do they that. Are. Right? Like, they're <laughs> like, they're, they've been doing this for a very, very long time. Unlike some of us. Yeah. No idea what we're yeah. doing. Um, <laughs> it's fine. 
<laughs> anyways, uh, that's that's pretty much all I have for F uh, Frontline Gaming Network. Move my hands so. without my colors going bad. <laughs> Seth, why don't you tell us a little bit about who's winning stuff and things? I don't know if you care about that. Kind of stuff. <laughs> sure, yeah, I can. I can do the competitive news. So, uh, uh, in terms of like what's going on outside in the the tournament meta right now, uh, AdMech have kindly started to, to get some games. Um, and this past weekend, they on their their kind of their big tournament debut weekend, they had a sixty two percent win rate, which is pretty darn high for AdMech. Um, it's a really strong result. They've got the Warzone, Warzone Charmeleon Book Charizard. 2 Flame Spin Attack. Um, that has teased some new <laughs> Veterans of Takari detachments coming out. So they're going to be getting some more new rules. So just get ready for that lovely ad mech meta for a while, folks. Oh, um, most of them have been focusing around large units of imp Rangers or, or Vanguard. Um, then they use those Iron Shrider Ballastari for their, their anti-tank punch. But there's, there's a lot of tricks. They're they're a very deep codex, if that makes sense. Um, so just kind of get ready for for seeing a lot of ad mech in the meta uh, for the for the near future until orcs come to settle the score. <laughs> I, I don't want this for you, Seth, but part of me is really expecting since Jakari were so hardcore and ad mech are just crushing it that the orc codex is just going to be like. <laughs> why why, why you got to put that evil on me, Shelby? Why you got to put that evil on me? I just want you to be prepared for that possibility. Did you make me green? That green? Hold on. I am 90% certain that our producer, Richard, intentionally just made me green. I am with envy. I'm I'm green with envy of what the other codexes have gotten. It's anyway, <laughs> clarification on GW terrain for the GW events. Um, GW released their MetaWatch article where they're discussing the new terrain uh, layout that they had proposed for their events. Um, basically there's there's the small little periphery pieces and then there's two different terrain types they labeled them terrain one two and three but one is these large square ruins are typically midfield um and these they they pointed out are going to have completely uh Line, true line of sight blocking walls, completely obscuring. So even when you're in the base, you can hide behind those walls and be protected. Um, the smaller rectangular ones are going to be porous. So once you, they both have the obscuring keyword, but those smaller ones, once you enter them, you'll be able to see, uh, be, see and be seen through those. So that makes it a lot easier uh, to be shot in those particular ones. They did uh, kind of have an odd ruling, which I'll, I want to see how it kind of plays out moving forward. They said objectives can go on the terrain bases that they showed in the pictures, but not That's in the actual ruins themselves, which seems like a little bit of a contradiction from how I understand the rules, because you're not supposed to be able to put terrain uh, or an objective in terrain. Um, but they did clearly state that the, those those bases were the, the edge of the area terrain, which is where all the keywords stop really affecting you. So um, what do you guys think rules. about that? They can do whatever they want. They, they can do whatever they want. They make the book. I know they do, but I would like it if they told us something <laughs> consistent. I, I just want it to be very crystal clear, which I think is probably asking a lot. Well, Unfortunately. well, I, I, like I said, uh, the last week or maybe the week before Orlando's the guinea pigs, we're going to see how the guinea pigs do, you know, if the guinea pigs in Orlando survive, we'll be ready for the new Orleans event in October. And, and so is it day one, the train is all laid up one way and day two, they rotate. The they train really stuff? haven't said they, they did. I, they, they very, oh, they yeah. laid it out in the book. Yeah. They, so they, they said, so day one is going to be a, all of the tables are set up the same way for terrain day two. All of the tables are going to be set up the same way with terrain, but they're going to be distinctly different. They're going to be a different layout. Uh, day three, I don't know what they're going to Rearranging terrain overnight. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's geez. only like several hundred tables. It's fine. <laughs> 125, 126 tables. <laughs> I'm sure they have a gajillion volunteers, right guys? Yep. Sure. All right. All right, let's get to the uh, the ITC recap. So for your 40K competitive track, not a lot of movement again. Uh, number five being Nick Notavati. Number four, Mark Hurdle. Again, I expect Mark to start moving up the ranks. He's got that, that ad mech. Brad Chester, the traitorous scum I've heard is going to get himself an orc army and join the, the WOG. Uh, <laughs> Why are you upset about that? Yeah, he's raising because your he banner, hops. I've been on orcs forever. And that's all right. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to say you. what I really think. I, I love you, you, Brad. I'll see you at Charity Hammer. Um <laughs> John Lennon is number two, and number one is uh, Sean Naden. Oh, wow. Yeah, John uh, Lennon over. won best overall at the he tournament yeah, this he weekend he in he, individual. He points. missed a grand total in five games. He missed six battle points. What? Yeah. Jeez. It was just, bananas. Just six. Yeah. What was he running? What was he playing? He was playing his Ultramarine Dread list. He calls it Ultra Memes, but it just blows you off the table. It's yeah. effective, obviously. It's good shit. <laughs> Um, for the 40k hobby track, number five is Nicholas Wenker, number four, Noah Bedham, number three, Rick Hill, number two, Lee Harris, and number one, JT Steger. Uh, did we have some pictures this week? 
Yeah, it's JT's. Uh, this is JT's armies. He sent it to me uh, earlier this week. Uh, just gorgeous stuff. He was at Atlantic City Open. Really nice guy too. Uh, yeah. He's been working Ooh, hard. Really he's been nice. working hard on this. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, okay. you can go see online. We'll post a couple photos. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just just gorgeous photos of his uh, of his Marines. Yeah. Uh, Robert says that John Lennon missed nine points. Just, oh, just thank fan. you, thank you, huge Tito. difference. <laughs> yeah, nine points, scrub. That's, That's almost why two points per John game Lennon. instead of one point per game. I think why you're oh, only a second slack, in the John Lennon. Uh, what's <laughs> happening in uh, Age of Sigmar? Yeah, so Age of Sigmar competitive track. Not a whole lot of movement again. Uh, we do have a new fifth place. Uh, no Aquino. Uh, number four, Daniel Vasquez. Number three, Matthew Abbott. Number two, Ramon Silva. And number one is still Anthony Trentinelli. That is a fun last name, Anthony. I like that. Hobby track is still a massive tie. Uh, please, AOS TOs, get some hobby track scores in there. Number five is Brendan Dominguez. Number four, Ramon Silva. Number three, Gabriel Pacheco. Number two, Matthew Abbott. And number one, Scott Reed. And that is your ITC recap for this week. I just want to see all those people win first place. <laughs> I think it's a conspiracy, actually, for them all to win first place. Well, the, the guy, Scott Reed actually has a higher score than the rest of them. So he's like <gasps> one. And then everyone else is a massive tie for second. Well, so I think Scott bribed his TO. Maybe. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. <clears throat> All cool. right. Shelby, would you like to introduce our next guest? Yes, I absolutely would. So you guys, um, last week we put off talking about the code of conduct so that we could get a real voice of authority in here. Put your internet hands together uh, for Adam Solis. Welcome, welcome, We'll, we'll welcome put our Adam. real hands hey, together. It's hey, everybody. Up, dude? He, I hear he is the head honcho, the big cheese, the head judge uh, of the LVO. Yeah, Adam, why what? don't you take a second to just tell us about yourself? Yeah, what's your favorite color? Why are you here? Uh, black. Um, <laughs> so again, obviously, my name is Adam Solis. I've been playing 40K since Rogue Trader, late, late Rogue Trader, but and competitive since uh, when GW used to run the GTs back in the early 2000s. Uh, I play Chaos mainly, uh, Black Legion. But I also have a bunch of uh, Space Marines, Imperial Guard, uh, other Chaos Legions. But I mainly stick to Chaos at this point, unfortunately. <laughs> That's not Picker, unfortunate. You didn't ask him his favorite cereal. What's what's up? Yeah, with that? I should have asked you. What's your favorite breakfast cereal? This is a requirement um, for all guests to uh, respond to. I'm stuck to like Honey Nut Cheerios now. Okay, um, I can respect you. I, we're not going to be like close friends, but I can respect you. But I used to I used to eat uh, any anything with sugar. I used to add sugar to my cereal. <laughs> Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Which explains why I'm diabetic now. Moving right along, Shelby, please take the reins. Yeah, man, I just really like this. I really enjoy this revelation of Kicker just being like, I'm going to judge you based on your favorite cereal. And that's that, son. Um, so Kicker and I have already had the, the cereal discussion before. <laughs> <laughs> so Adam Solis, thank you so, so much for joining us today. Um, so obviously the reason, uh, one of many reasons that you're here is that we would love for you to chat and answer some questions with us about the ITC Code of Conduct, maybe clear some stuff up, give mm -hmm. an opportunity for anybody who's been watching and listening to also ask some questions. Um, just to give you guys a little bit of background before we jump into some questions for Adam and get chatting with him. Um, so some of the major changes brought to the code of conduct are a few things. Um, one of the biggest ones is that there's a huge emphasis on playing by intent. And what I mean by that isn't necessarily calling out exactly uh, what you like, what your plan is, but more, I am rolling these dice. This is what I'm rolling these dice for. I am moving these people. I'm moving these people for this or this, this many inches. I am charging here, right? Being very, very uh, clear about what you're doing when you're doing it to avoid basically any confusion, I think, about what's going on in the battlefield, avoiding any manipulation or potentially exploiting your opponent for maybe not paying attention. Now, if your opponent's not paying attention, that's on them, right? You're, it's not your job to make sure that they're listening at the table, but you are supposed to declare everything that you're doing. Um, in addition, we're going to have some yellow card penalties. Two yellows, much like soccer, will also equal a red card. Um, right? So red equals yeah. disqualification. So two yellow cards, you are disqualified from whatever game or event you may be participating in. In addition to yellow card penalties, most of these penalties will have some sort of point dock associated with them. Uh, just to give you guys some examples, um, not having your list submitted or having your list um, incorrect is going to be 20 points docked. Unsportsmanlike conduct, whatever that may entail, would also be a 20 point dock. Um, for, uh, what else? Illegally moving or placing models. So I'm assuming not declaring or nudging or bumping when when it's pretty Water intentional. Bottles, perhaps. Indeed, is going to be uh, ten points. Uh, slow play, misrepresenting a rule, all sorts of stuff, and then angle shooting. 
Eagles it's no, yeah. I don't, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Um, because yeah, that's I question. don't, because <laughs> questions. Um, <laughs> We're, they're also going to be throwing out, so uh, we've updated the code of conduct for, why well, say we, uh, Frontline Gaming, has updated the code of conduct for teams as well. So all of these penalties can be associated with the individual as well as your team. So teams as an entire, uh, as, as, as a as an entity, right, uh, can be warned. Once a team is warned, those members should proceed with caution beyond, you know, beyond their best behavior. Don't do anything bad. Um, that lasts about six months. Um, after the warning, you're then on watch. TOs are told to kind of closely monitor players when they're at these events for about 12 months. Um, yellow after, so we've got warning on watch, yellow, all members of that club are going to start each event with one yellow card for anywhere between a year and three years. Uh, so I'm assuming that takes like y'all being real bad <laughs> for whatever reason, maybe. Um, and then you can also just be banned as a team, right? So um, yeah. mm -hmm. we have some questions that we wanted to go ahead and ask. Like I said, I just wanted to go ahead and get that rough outline of some rules out there if you guys haven't had a chance to look at the code of conduct. Um, but yeah, we can, if you guys would like, we can work through the questions that we already have. Yeah, actually, we start with the ones we already had submitted, but uh, chat, start throwing questions in if you have now, because there's a bit of a delay with our software for sure. when you typed when we see it. So start getting your questions in if if you got questions for Adam. But uh, let me take the first one. So if you didn't know, you can come over to the FLG community page on Facebook and submit questions e each week. These are where these questions came from. Scott from Columbia, Missouri says, do you feel the new code of conduct can be weaponized? Also, what is the definition of angle shooting, Adam? So <clears throat> for a little background, the code of conduct was created a, few, a couple of years ago after, for those that remember, after an incident we had uh, during one of the the round the games during the round of I think it was the round of four the semifinals where people were uh, the players one player was playing by intent the other player played by raw and it caused an issue that infuriated the community in general in addition to other issues that happened so the code of conduct is more of a guideline there's uh, many people will take it at face value but we modeled it after soccer which is why we have the card system. So because of that, there's a lot of wiggle room for judges and uh, TOs in regards to the penalties and stuff. Although uh, we just listed what some of the penalties are and the point values associated with them. That's not a hard, fast rule. You can, if the judge feels like they need to either add more or less points to a penalty than they can, um, or if they feel they need to just uh, jump to a red card immediately, they can. So in, in terms of weaponizing, that was always an issue, especially when we first came out with it. Um, and that's actually part of the code of conduct. So when someone's judge, when the person's judging an event, they have to be conscious of if they're coming to certain players' tables all the time, and are their questions warranted? Are their questions kind of like, are they ask, asking legitimate questions, or are they just trying to get this person in trouble? Because what we've seen is a lot of times some players, if they know their opponent already has a yellow, they may try to get them to get another yellow card in order to disqualify them. And no, and it knowing that coming to the table, the judge has to be conscious of basically what's going on. And if this player keeps doing it every turn, what sometimes ends up happening, which has happened in the past, is the person calling the judge over trying to weaponize it actually gets punished themselves because we realize he is trying to weaponize the the, the code of conduct. So it's something we've been dealing with, or it's something that's been a concern since the beginning. So even with the new code of conduct, that that concern is still there because there'll be people like that. It's just on the judges to kind of like be aware of it and try to uh, nip it in the bud, especially early on. In right. regards to angle shooting, there is, it, if you go to like the second to the last or the last page of the document, there's a uh, definitions section and that explains what angle shooting and all it basically is, is someone trying to bend the rules but not break them. So it's a little different from cheating where it's out and out, you know, breaking the rules. Angle shooting, your basic, it's, the type of play where you're either a lot of times you're taking advantage of new players or taking advantage, advantage of players that may not understand the rules as completely as you do, or just skirting the edge of the rules where they have this convoluted explanation of why they can do a certain thing or why a certain thing can't be done. Is, is that sort of like gotcha hammer? We, we throw that term around a lot. Uh, it can be, you know, um, like if I ask, you know, 
a direct question, can this unit advance and charge? And you say no. And then you're like, but I'm going to play a stratagem and advance and charge. Would that be angle shooting? It can be, but that's also explained in the in the code of conduct in terms of in terms. There's a section that talks about being completely honest with what you're with the abilities of your unit and your army. If someone asks, uh, it was a similar thing in War Machine has that had that kind of thing or has that All kind right. of thing where if if your opponent asks a question regarding the unit, like can they move, how far they can move, you should give a complete answer to be as truthful as possible. Otherwise, you're withholding information on purpose. That can be a form of angle shooting, but that's mentioned uh, in, another, in another section in the Code of Conduct. All right. So angle shooting can be legal technically. It's almost like a raw versus rye argument. Um, but, I mean, you know it's not supposed to be played that way a certain way. So, And it's really up to the judge to determine what those angles are. Um, so, so is this maybe a penalty that's kind of giving judges a little bit of discretionary freedom, if that makes sense? Yes. So especially if you're aware of what the issues are, which and if anyone access to Facebook, the Internet, Reddit, you can usually find out what the issues are or the current issues that people are trying to use uh, to gain an advantage, whether, you know, whether it's uh, arguing about a strategy and being able to use being able to use or things like that. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Shelby, you want the next one? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, really quickly before we keep going, you're right, chat. I don't breathe ever. <laughs> <laughs> never stop, never stopping. Um, also, we still haven't renamed the stream, apparently. That's fine. Everything's fine. Um, or maybe we have an all content. Well. I don't know. This uh, is what so happens when Daddy L. Hefe is not here. It's fine. Right. Um, so Skylar from New Orleans uh, threw out the question of how often do you see TOs enforcing the point reductions at non-FLG sanctioned events? So I guess how many, how often do you think other events are going to take this code of conduct and the point reduction policy and put it in their own tournaments? You think it's going to be widespread, not so much? Um, I think it's hard to say. It, it depends how comfortable a TO is with doing that. Like I'm totally comfortable with it, but that's because I helped write it. Um, but I think some of the easier, I think it's easier to do some of them like the, the list, the list submission deadline. That's, that's an easy one to enforce. Uh, like I mentioned before, the, the, the code of conduct empowers judges to with a lot of, with basically do what they want. So if they want to impose a penalty, they can, if they don't want to, they don't have to, or if they only want, like there's certain instances where it says to penalize both players, but a judge doesn't have to, or they can just maybe wait one more than the other. I'm not sure how widespread it's going to be. It's going to take some time to getting used to. Some judges will take to it, you know, like 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 a duck in water. Other judges are maybe a bit more hesitant as to, you know, applying a point penalty because they don't want to maybe seem to like favoring one player or another or one army or a team or whatever. So I, I think it'll be it'll, it really will depend on the judges. Some sure. judges will, will jump on it. Some will, will, will some won't use it at all. They'll use the code of conduct, but they won't, won't use the points part. So right. I'm not to be honest. I'm not sure. I'm curious how how much of the code of conduct uh, people people will use. Same. I I did see interestingly enough the mall at the mall major uh, is mm -hmm. it, they they released their kind of packet and rules today and they did say they're going to do point reductions for at least a few things. I don't yeah. think like kind of the comprehensive list that the code of conduct did, but they're using that so that's neat i'm curious yeah to see how go. I, I i think it's gonna have to start at that level where it's kind of like we'll use parts of it and then see where it goes from there i think the threat of it is more or less what what may keep people in check so to speak as opposed to actually using it but once once they see it done then a lot of people will probably take notice so sure. uh, you know you just need you just need someone's gonna have to take the hit unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately right. Right. Point hit, and then uh and then hopefully people will fall in line Gotcha. But Adam, it's a really cool uh, tool that you and the other frontline gaming staff judges created. I mean, this gives you know TOs something that they can lean on. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, we put down point values, but it's it's really you don't have to put you know, if like like one of them's like uh, dice infractions. They would said ten points, but maybe you're like, okay, it's just a little thing. Okay, maybe five points, you know, yeah. or a couple points. It doesn't. What we put is not hard and fast. You can a, a person can just change it however they want. So. Or they can add more, but then that's a whole other issue. Uh, for me, I would probably subtract more than add unless it's a really serious infraction. Cool. Hey, uh, Sandy from Fremont, California is asking about active judging and if you think it'll become normalized, sort of like chess clocks have just become a standard part of all tournaments. 
that depends on a number of factors. It depends on how many judges you have and about and the event and the size of the event, which almost go hand in hand. I know Kicker, you put up that poll about how many judges, what yeah. the ratio, ideal ratio would be. Um, and most people put, like, I think it was one to 32. Yeah, yeah, that was the lowest. And people wanted probably, more, you know, a smaller. Which, in, all, in, in reality, is really, would be really hard to come by. Because, like, so, like uh, I think it was Neil Kerr mentioned, the hard part's not getting people. Well, it's still kind of hard, but it's getting the quality of people yeah. to judge those events. Right. Um, and to kind of get that consistency yeah. across the whole event. So, I mean, the, just to expand on that for a second, I mean, you can be a good player, but you can, that doesn't mean you're going to be a good judge. <laughs> um, yeah. look, plain and simple. Like, you ask, like if, if, you know, I know orcs, if you ask me an orc question, I know the answer. But if you ask me, how does this guard and Eldar interaction work? I'll be like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I think that. What, what people can do and what's been mentioned before is you can at least active judge the later rounds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. if, so you may not be able to active judge the whole tournament, but as a, as a tournament progressive progresses, you can become, you can look more at the higher end tables. I mean, still pay attention to the lower end cause there's still stuff that can happen there, but you, you would pay a little more attention to the iron and higher end tables and try to active judge those. If you're doing something like LVO or uh, ACO format, where it's the two days and then there's a cutoff for top eight, it's a lot easier to active judge those because there's only really four or five games. There's only like four games going on at, at most. Um, but I don't know how normalized it would get. It would really depend on how, how many judges uh, that you get for the event. Cool, cool, cool. I also imagine, you know, as a someone who's been being a judge in the community for a long time, do you, would you consider active judging earlier in the event if you had players that previously you knew there were issues with them in the past? That that's usually what happens. I mean, I mean, let's not lie. Each event probably has a list of players they keep an eye out for. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so if you know these players are coming to your event, then you probably hang around their table or linger a little longer or walk by their table a little more, a little more often, especially if it's two players playing each other. Yeah. You know, you don't, ideally you don't want to have to be standing at their, at their table, <laughs> um, but it happens. Um, and that's probably a yellow card, but, um, but you shouldn't have to, but you should probably pass by those tables a lot more often. And maybe if you see or hear something, maybe then say something. All right. Well, our next question, uh, Kelsey from Hawaii says, with the new uh, team rules, is FLG considering limiting players' ability to join slash claim to join a team to prevent players from sabotaging other teams? Interesting. I don't. I wonder if they mean the teams would, in terms of the whole. The I, whole I think. Uh, right? I think their their example, um, and and I'm going to say this because I know a lot of those guys and I love them, but it would be like if I joined Brohammer, and mm -hmm. I did nothing but shady crap for six months trying to get Brohammer, you know, oh, given the, the new yellows, teams, uh, yeah, you know, given a yellow score and then right. affecting the rest of the team. Um, hopefully, we'll have something that can that can monitor that type of stuff. We don't have anything right now. And there's been issues with players uh, putting their scores with different, with multiple teams, but that yeah. that's something I think will probably have to be looked at in the future. Maybe not this season. Kind of spinning off that. Sorry, I'm kind of that's monopolizing okay. this conversation, but I have <laughs> lots of thoughts. Sorry, guys. Um, so so a lot well, of Shelly took up all the talking earlier. So she did. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. She didn't I, I, she just... Absolutely. <laughs> I'm still just recovering from my lack of oxygen yeah. over here. Can we go um, back to serial conversation again, please? No, no. This is a competitive <laughs> talk. Kicker. Serious. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, train of thought. You guys derailed it. Thanks a lot. Um, so, uh, the, the team system I thought was really intriguing because that implies that there is a, a chain of command, so to speak, within the ITC, and then there are conduct is reviewed by a group. Can we expand on that any? Like who? Like if 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 I am a TO and I have a, a certain group that seems to be causing issues, like who do I report to? And if I'm a team that's having issues reported about me, how is that going to get adjudicated? Yeah, that's something we we have to because especially with more team events coming out um, and just more events in general, it's, it's something we'll have to like look into. Right now, there there really isn't anything unless you let one of us, uh, one of the. Uh, FLG judges know 
and then then we can talk to, about it as a group and figure out what's actually going on between everybody making these claims. That's how it is right now, but in the future, I hope to have something uh, more uh, formalized. Right. Yeah. My hope is that in 95% of cases, right, like teams quickly notice that sort of thing, if it happens yeah. at all, right? Like it's a rarity, but even that rarity is still pretty pretty much picked up by the team and the team can police it to whatever degree they need to, hopefully. But I do understand like having this sort of system in place for when that's not the case. It's yeah. So. His, his, historically, I only know of maybe two teams that were that were a problem and both of them as far as i can tell aren't around anymore yeah i i i really again i'm gonna harp on i like this team stuff because the other the other flip side the the, the positive side of the coin mm -hmm. i'm gonna go positive for you kicker just All for right. you buddy Thank um, you. making a team penalty sort of makes a team police itself yes if if there is a if there is a risk that we as a team are all you know the three of us are a team and we are we are going to get penalized from the behavior of one of our individuals, that sort of makes us keep a close eye on our our own members to make sure they're going to behave correctly. Um, so I think that was an interesting thing to add this year. It it'll be interesting to see how that dynamic evolves going forward. Yeah, yeah we we added that this year because there's a lot more teams coming out and we there have been issues with players. Uh, Maybe some issues with uh, some uh, multiple issues with one team, if I can remember correctly, but I don't, I don't think those issues are there anymore because this was like two years ago. Because um, I don't think those players are in the team anymore, as far as I can remember. But it's it's something we've thought about, and it's uh, I think it's at this point it's a natural progression of the whole, uh, especially with frontline expanding their tournaments. I think yeah. it's just something that that front at least frontline can't control because part of the issue is that. Frontline ITC it doesn't try to control the 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 tournament scene. I don't know if that makes sense. You may it may yeah. not seem like it, <laughs> depending on who you ask. But I, I think the philosophy with the everyone do whatever they want, just to show us your scores, just to give us your scores is more or less how they how they roll. But people like to be told what to do sometimes, and so that's why a lot of people follow whatever ITC does. Yeah. Well, I, I grabbed a few questions from chat. Um, yeah. Chat, get any more questions in that you got? Kicker, you want to take the next one? Or Shelby, you want to take the next one? Sure. So, uh, Tomodachi Express, who may or may not be Kelsey. I don't actually, I, I think it's Kelsey, but I, I don't want to like just, just say that it's Kelsey. But it's either way, he, he, he asks great questions. Uh, so he asks, is tricking or grifting your opponent into doing something against the code of conduct? And the example mm -hmm. that he gives in chat that he says he's seen before, uh, or that they say they've seen before, is that they've, um, somebody saying, what powers are you going to cast in your psychic phase in the movement phase, phase of their opponent to try and get them to like, forget some of their movement phase and move on to the psychic phase uh which in my brain just sounds like super shitty but like <laughs> I, I can imagine happening so um yes it, is that it, is that against the code of conduct yes because you're yeah. you're yeah um because you're going against <laughs> the spirit of the game and so like i mentioned so it it a lot of it's bait well not a lot of it almost all of it is based off of soccer yeah or football depending where you're listening from um <laughs> So, well, because I, I, I ref soccer for like 13 years in, you know, kids, club, high school. And I also taught so uh, referee. I also taught the rules, of, the laws of the game also. So um, so that's where my experience was when, when we were creating this. And the whole concept, and I believe that's what GW based basically the game on, is, is spirit of the game. Because GW talks about it all the time. And soccer is big in the UK. So... A judge has the, has the discretion of, of basically using that as when they card someone. So if they notice someone, um, a lot of times when people when people like when people weaponize the clock for whatever reason, you can card someone because that's even though technically they can do it, which is kind of like angling. Even though technically they can de can do certain things with the clock, if you do it just because you want to like waste time or do whatever, you can be, be carded for it because it's against the spirit of the game. So technically, like if someone has like two minutes left in their clock, because this happens a lot, and someone has like 20 minutes, they'll just like go on their clock and they'll just do nothing for like 15 minutes because they want to get it below five minutes to end the game. I mean, you can construe that as unsportsmanlike and so, not against the spirit of the game. 
as a, as a follow up, and Colin has a decent follow up that I think. And if this this is getting complicated in the weeds a little bit, but I'm curious to see yeah. how you'll how you how you feel about it. This goes back to weaponizing this code of conduct in general. Um, and he says, what happens if somebody, for example, on this psychic phase hypothetical, intentionally skips a power and then tries to get you yellow carded for not noticing? Uh, that you skip the, that you, oh, because you didn't, I don't know what he means by yeah, skip a I, power. I, I think like just in general, uh, trying to get your opponent yellow carded for, I don't know, I think I'm doing a poor job of explaining that, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure I'm following <laughs> Skip the Power myself. <laughs> Sorry, um, but um, maybe we, maybe he'll he'll elaborate. But just yeah. in general, going back to like the weaponizing the yellow card thing, uh, player A skips the power, player right. B doesn't notice, uh, and maybe he will he will write so more. So he doesn't he doesn't cast the power. Yeah. I'm uh, assuming maybe. Um, Sorry, we're going off the rails a little bit, folks. Player A calls a judge and says, hey, they didn't tell me I missed a power. Oh, they, well, first I off, see. I would say they're not required to tell you you missed a power. That's, right. that's okay. on you. So it's not really weaponizing. For sure. Um, and if, if I get keep on getting called to that table for questions like that, then I yellow card the player that's telling me yes. that's trying to weaponize it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Which, is, gotcha. which has it's happened. Back, so. It's back to weaponizing the code of conduct. For yeah. sure, for sure. Which there, again, there's a section on that. But well, I, think it's, I think it's good. I'm yeah. glad that we got there because it's good to know that if you are, if it's, if it's pretty obvious that you're trying to weaponize that situation, that the judges are probably going to be they're they're not naive. You're not dumb. <laughs> yeah. They can tell what you're doing, and they are well within their power to to use yeah, their. And, and, and let's yeah. be honest, not every judge will will be able to notice that. Yeah. So it may happen on occasion, but. Uh, hope, hopefully, the, the judges out there will have enough practice, at the very least, to, to notice it. All right. Fair cool. So, well, let's, uh, I got let's one, last, one last oh. question for him. Uh, is that okay. cool, you, Seth? Fine. If it's got zero, one more. One more. Just because this one caught me off guard, Adam, and I had mm -hmm. no idea. Is it true that people are going to be expected to have tokens to help represent what their army is doing during a game? Is that going to be like you know required? I guess to have <laughs> so. Tokens? A fun, funny thing about about the code of conduct. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there people are discovering for the first time, but it's yeah, actually yeah. been in there for multiple years. That's been so, in there for years. The token is the tokens, and uh, is one of them. <laughs> oh, wow! It, it's yeah. been there since the beginning. Wow. Okay. So, so it's up to the judge whether he wants to enforce it or not. We put that because we you, you should be clear with what you're doing when we, card, when we talk about intent and things like that. Most people have tokens. Yeah. But sometimes people don't, and when it gets to the point where they're doing stuff and you're trying to follow it and you're getting confused, then you just stop, call a judge, and let them know. And then the judge has to decide whether he wants to like penalize them or not for not having. Yeah, I mean the codexes are only getting more complicated. I mean, right? And I mean, and, like, and it helped me to see what other people are doing because I have no idea how to follow along with all the the psychic powers or, or even my own army, the Admech army. Yeah, I was like, yeah. Admech are the worst, buddy. Yeah. Absolutely, Guilty. they just like throw a yeah. bunch of coins on the table. Yeah, so so yeah, and like I said, I've. I've seen it before where, it, and I've played games where, where like, especially like Dark Eldar, where they have raiders and they all look the same. <laughs> and okay, this one's shooting, this one's shooting, this, oh wait, did I shoot this one? I forgot. Um, I think I did. I don't remember if I did. Well, then that starts happening. You got to call a judge over and tell him, hey, he's not using. And we've made people either buy tokens or find so, somehow find tokens or find a way to to mark where some they did whatever they needed to do with that unit. So. And yes, Friendly Gaming will be releasing some tokens in the next few days. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on a completely unrelated back. note. Shameless plug. Shameless <laughs> plug. Well, now people, now people are going to think we did it just yeah. to sell tokens. <laughs> right. That's what I was like. Oh no, jeez. Speaking uh, of speaking of shameless plugs, as we're wrapping up, Adam, where yeah. can people find you and listen to you if uh, if they want to hear more of your rules, judgments, and or, or rage your your stream and ask more questions? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you I'm more than happy to ha have it. Have the questions. So uh, I'm on a podcast called TFG Radio. There's actually three, counting myself. There's three of the LVO judges on that podcast. Awesome. So it's myself, uh, Salty John, as most people know, especially if you like memes. And then Danny, who's the silent uh, silent partner, so to speak. <laughs> but uh, but and we're, we're at every usually every other week, every, uh, Thursdays, at, it's at 8 p.m. Pacific. So it's, it's not – so the East Coast people, it's usually not 10. up. There are a few. Yeah. Um, but we, then we put it out on, on podcasts, so you can find us there. And then we put out the episode on YouTube 
afterwards. So just look up TFD Radio and you can easily find us. Time zones are hard. It's two hours. Yes. It'll be at 10 p.m. for us. Is it? Okay, but it's yeah. three. It's, it's 11 for, for East Coasters. Yeah. We, okay. we still have people on the East Coast that, that are on. Okay. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. All right. Well, um, we're going to, we're going to hold on the le- rest of the listener questions that were submitted, um, uh, because we've gone a little long tonight, but we really appreciate you coming on, Adam. It's been great. Having no problem. You. It was a lot Thank of fun. Great, you. Uh, providing us with your insight, um, from the, the evil cabal that is the, uh, ITC <laughs> code of conduct. judges. <laughs> the anti tal cabal. Um, yeah. So, uh, don't forget, uh, Lone Star Open is, uh, just three short weeks away. Um, you got to make up your list- mind. Yeah, what should I do, listeners? Should I should I YOLO into that, or should I go, stick with my plan go. to go to? Dude, well, you know yeah. what they're gonna say, dude. No, I, I need a friend. Come on. Picker has zero friends. Everyone just so we have to go be his friend. Wow. Uh, what? Oh, what are I we? <laughs> uh, so I would love if you would come and join me in Texas. Please come. Yeah, they needed someone to help up uh, do the takedown afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I, need, I, need, I need someone to move the pellets. I need someone yeah, to help move all the boxes. Um, oh, perfect. Don't get to check out tomorrow. We got the uh, the Thursday show coming out, and at some point, uh, Sat Center will come back, and I'm sure it'll be fantastic. Um, and then next week, the whole schedule just keeps right on rolling with Chapter Tactics and Grim After Dark again, and then back to us. Um, it's a never-ending cycle. Any final thoughts from anyone, including uh, I, I, you? I really want to say. Thank you to Adam. Seriously, Adam, thank you to you, not just for coming onto our show, but just for being one of the frontline gaming staff judges. Like, dude, seriously, you guys do so much work that gets not really appreciated. You guys are always working behind the scenes. And, and, and so seriously, on behalf of myself as a player and as part of the frontline gaming community, just thank you, man. Thank I you. I enjoy doing it. Yeah. Well, thank you, man. Any other final thoughts before we uh, send this one to bed? Um, I'm going to go have a bowl of cereal since mm-hmm. we talked about it so much. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's what I got. All right. All right. What what cereal? That's important. Yeah, Final right. thought. What cereal shall we? Uh, currently, we have honey nut frosted flakes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Which are I, very yeah, yeah. That's how yeah. I felt whenever Ryan brought them home. I was very confused. They're pretty All good right. though. Well, well, thank you for joining us, everyone. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Signals from the Frontline. Have a great week, and we will see you next Wednesday. Good Bye, night, guys. everybody.